What is going on? This is Darius from Autofair Nissan here, and today we're going to take a quick look at this 2024 Nissan Pathfinder S. Let's check it out. Starting off up front here, you're going to have your lights, you're going to have your LED low beams and high beams down in this bottom section, and then up here you're going to have your LED daytime running light. So that's just going to stay on, uh, providing some extra visibility during the day and at night, and a little bit of styling as well. Come around the side, you're going to start off even on the S model uh, with aluminum alloy wheels. Uh, so no steels with hubcaps for this car. You're going to get 18-inch gray aluminum wheels right from the get-go. Get some all-season tires on there. Move up, we're going to have some black mirror caps. I'm going to give you a view of your window sticker on here. Feel free to pause at any point if you want to read through this stuff in greater detail. Lots of good stuff that comes with it right out of the gate. So out of the gate, you're going to get your full Safety Shield 360 suite uh, in your safety and security section there, as well as like your Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Sirius XM, uh, and LED lights, all very important. You can see the base MSRP right here. Fuel economy estimates up top. 27 highway, that's pretty good, especially considering the kind of power and the towing capability that the Pathfinders have. Great safety ratings as well on here. So Pathfinder in this configuration at a hitch and it's going to tow 3,500 pounds. If you get one that comes with a hitch from the factory, then it can tow 6,000. Here's a nice wide profile of the side of the car here for you as well. Very nice. Come to the back seat real quick here. We've got to open it up though. Let's see. Take our key fob here. We've got lock, unlock, and then your alarm. So we're going to hit unlock a couple times, get all those doors popped open. You're going to see right there, you've got your floor mats and that are in their case still in their bag. So those will get installed when you take delivery of your new car. And this one is going to be set up with two benches. So you've got the second row bench and you've got a third row bench. So right now, what I'm going to do is hit the button right down here. Spring that forward here and you can see the back. So these seats are all the way back and those seats are down. So you can see the kind of versatile cargo configuration that you can do with these. So three seats in the back, three seats in the middle for six, and then two more up front for eight. Once we get to the back, I'll also put those seats down and you can kind of see what everything looks like in different uh, total configurations. Right in here, um, you're going to have latch systems down inside of the seat uh, so you can get your car seat set up. Also, these seats are going to be on sliding tracks. So you've got a lap bar underneath so you can actually move these seats forward and backwards depending on what your needs are uh, and really kind of get this customized um, depending on what your specific seating and, uh, you know, people moving configuration is going to look like. Let's go to the trunk. Back here at the trunk, you're going to see your Pathfinder uh, written in there uh, with the kind of pronounced emblems down low you're going to have all your parking sensors on your bumper there there same thing on the other side four-wheel drive badge because this is four-wheel drive and then we'll pop this open it's just a manual lift which is going to be hydraulically assisted um, so that's nice and easy just give it a little pull it's going to do the rest on its own you get some lighting up in here for if you're loading or unloading at night and back here you're going to see your trunk space with your third row up all the way obviously that takes a good amount of your trunk space out uh, but to kind of offset that you've got some extra storage underneath. So you can get some of the things that you don't necessarily need all the time uh, stored away, nice and out of the way, keep it from uh, you know, cluttering up this rear cargo area and keep everything nice and contained. Nothing will be rolling around back there. If we wanna put seats down, we're gonna pull this to drop the headrest and then push that forward. And it just drops right down. You can see your trunk space right there. If we wanna raise the seats up, we're gonna grab the strap here give it a pull and that's going to lock into place on its own now these seats do recline as well so from here if we want to do that we can just pull it back like that obviously that comes farther back into your trunk area but makes for a much more comfortable experience for your people in the third row and those pull up and just sit in position on their own so now we'll put that down all the way and i'm going to put the second row down and you can see what that looks like too and now that we've got both the second and third row completely flattened down. You can see how much space you get if you really need to maximize cargo. So if you're moving larger items instead of people, you get a ton of space here, a ton of space. If we come around actually to the second row back door here, you can see from here, you've just got this ever so slight lip right there. But if you're sliding something up and over, such as a mattress, furniture, things like that, kayaks, whatever, you, you know, you can get those in there very well. 
to drop those seats, all we had to do was pull this little lever. So I'll demonstrate now. So with that seat up, just give this a pull and that's gonna drop down and spring right into position. Additionally, if you're a passenger in the third row, as I am here, first of all, I've got tons of cup holder access. I got four back here. But if I need to get out, I can do that by pressing that button and this will spring forward on its own. And one other handy piece of information from the third row is that you actually get vents right up top here. So third row and second row, get overhead vents so that you stay nice and comfortable back here, get some good airflow. Uh, and there is a third climate zone that I can show you the controls for both from the second row and the first row. You've also got some lights back here as well. So those will come on. They're nice, uh, nice, soft, warm color back here. So they're not too taxing on you at night if you're looking at them. So all in all, very accommodating third row space back here. Now from the second row here, if we look up, we're going to see those vents are right nice and close to us. We get our nice lights built right in there. And look up in the center of the console area, you're going to have a type C and a type A plug-in as well as a little extra storage tray. This side also gets the little backseat door pocket. And over here on the door, you're going to see you get some extra two cup holders there and an additional drink holder down below. Same thing on the other side as well. Very roomy in the second row, very comfortable. You can really kind of get this reclined back here as well for some extra uh, extra kind of support, especially on longer drives. And last but certainly not least, we're going to have the driver's perspective up here in the first row. So looking around, you can see some nice innovative control or excuse me, intuitive controls here on the steering wheel for your cruise control, for your phone. Uh, for your advanced drive assist display, which is your center screen right there. Let's go through that right here now, actually. We're going to use the left, the right, and the scroll wheel right now to kind of adjust ourselves through the screen. You went from digital speed to trip information, tire pressures, music, all your safety settings, and all your main settings that you can go in and really kind of make this car your own. Lots of good stuff in there. Uh, too much to cover in, in one short walk around video, uh, but there's a lot of customization that you can do right in your advanced drive assist display. Down low, you're gonna see the car is seven miles on it, 400 miles to empty, uh, and the idle start stop is off right now uh, because it is trying to cool the cabin. So it's not a very intrusive system that does the idle start stop, but if you do still want to disable it, button for that is right here. You can do that anytime uh, during your drive when you press it. It's just gonna give you that little message right there for on or off, depending on what mode you're going into. Over here on the left-hand side of the steering wheel, behind, behind the steering wheel on the column, you've got your light control on your turn signal stock. So in auto, if you use your automatic high beams, you just press the button in. So you can see right there, it'll tell you only with auto lights. So with auto lights, press the button in, auto high beams will happen. Basically, you never have to touch your lights because the low beams will come on when it's dark or when your windshield wipers are on and your high beams will come on as needed. So that's a really nice feature to have there. Volume controls for your music and your calls, and then you've got your previous and next button over here as well. Paddle shifters for manual adjustment of your gears. You've got nine gears in this transmission. Uh, so if you're going like down steep hills, or if you just wanna kind of have that extra bit of control, you can use the paddle shifters here to downshift and upshift respectively. Now down on the side here, you've got controls for the brightness on your screen. Come over to this side, you're going to have your push to start button, you're going to have your climate controls here. This is really nice, really easy to use. Um, you've got tri-zone, so I can adjust the passenger side right here, completely independent of the driver's side, so driver is still on low. Passenger side is maybe a little cold, so we want to warm it up a little bit. We want to control the rear, we can do that right there. Adjust the fan speed, adjust the temperature with this one. So we'll put that up a little bit and get out of that. You can see that you've got three separate temperatures going uh, so everybody can kind of be happy with what they've uh, with what they've got available. Fan speed is going to be controlled just one setting for the front and one setting for the second and third row. If we want everything back to the driver control, we press that sync button right there and it's going to just link everything up to this side. Down here, you're going to have a 12 volt plug in as well as you're going to have a couple of USBs. You're going to get a type A and a type C down there. You've got some paper right there. A uh, little storage tray. Extra storage here too, that spot's great for fitting the phone, as is that, especially if you put the wireless charger accessory in here. Shifter's going to be nice and easy to use, right now it's in park, if we want to go into drive, we put our foot on the brake, we can pull that straight back, that is drive, as indicated right there, as well as right on the bottom, right below where it says pop rocks. If we want to go into a different gear, we're going to press here, we're going to push forward, that's going to give us reverse. Once we let go, you can see it kind of shows your little light there. And you can see the backup camera there, real time, somebody's driving behind us. 
Um, on here, you're going to have your green, yellow, and red tick marks for your uh, distance indication, as well as your steering here. You can see where the car is going to go as you're steering as I'm kind of turning the wheel. So that's really handy for getting yourself positioned into a spot. Now we want to go back to park. That's going to be nice and easy. Just press a button on top. You see that switch right back into there. You've also got a special mode for if you're going through the car wash called neutral hold. Basically, you put it in park and then you put it in neutral twice. So neutral, by the way, is a push your foot on the brake, press and hold that forward without pressing the button. If you're in reverse and you want to go to neutral, you just got to be a little bit more careful with it by pulling back just one click. You'll feel one, two clicks. Same with going forward, you feel one, two clicks. Unless you don't press the button and it only goes forward one. So we'll put it back in park and we'll put our parking brake on right here just by pulling that up. If we want to take our parking brake off, foot on the brake, push down on it, nice and easy. Auto hold is going to hold you at a stop when you come to a full stop. So if you're using that, pull up to the stoplight or sign and it'll show you on the dashboard when you're good to go. And then you can actually take your foot off of the brake completely. So that's really cool. Really nice feature if you do a lot of driving in the city. And finally, you've got your drive modes right here. So if we look on the main screen here, uh, your advanced driver assist display, it'll show you what mode you're in as you're turning the wheel. So you've got sand, mud, rut, snow, auto, eco, sport, and tow mode at the very bottom, all with their own characteristics for both the engine transmission and as well as the uh, four-wheel drive uh, will have adjusted uh, settings when you're using your different modes. You've also got a downhill speed control here in the center. Got some extra storage space in here, nice and easy. It's nice and soft leather wrap, so really comfortable to lean on. Uh, move up to the very top, you're gonna get all your light controls up here, all important sunglasses holder, and lastly, for this video, your main screen here with your Apple CarPlay and Android Auto integration, Sirius XM integration, Bluetooth integration. So, I mean, this kind of just does everything. Very easy, very intuitive controls. You do get some buttons, which is nice. I know a lot of people uh, tend to give the thumbs down to having everything on the touchscreen. So you do have the ability to use some buttons and some knobs here. So if you want to, for example, change your uh station right here you can actually just turn that knob volume control right there which i can't do or else white stripes will sue me so you're gonna have to kind of play with this a little bit more in person let us know when you want to come in and take a look at it uh, hopefully you found this video nice and informative but if you have any questions uh, or if there's anything that I didn't cover that you would have liked to see, feel free to leave a comment down below uh, or get in touch with me direct me, directly. I've had a few people do that uh, in the past. They've sent emails um, or even called in just asking questions. And you know, I'm happy to get back to you that way as well. Do a special video if you want to see something in particular. Um, but other than that, we hope to see you soon. Thank you so much for your time and thanks for watching. Have a great day.